Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today it's time to complete the final meld. We've done Urza and Mishra. Today it's time for Titania, Voice of Gaia. 3 mana, 3-4 three, legendary elemental at Mythic has reach. Says whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain 2 life. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 4 or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and control Titania and a land named Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, we can exile them and meld them into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. Let's first take a look at Argoth, Sanctum of Nature. Enters tapped unless we control a legendary green creature, which in this deck just means if we control Titania, can tap for green and can also pay 4 mana, tap it, and make a 2-2 green bear creature token and then mill 3 cards only at sorcery speed, so that can also be a way to enable Titania to put enough lands in the graveyard to transform it in the first place. And then once we meld into Gaia Incarnate, it's a star star whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, has a Vigilance, Reach, Trample, and Haste, and when Titania enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So that's going to give us a huge mana boost, and of course also grow Titania, so it can hit for a ton of damage. And then we also have a nice mana sink for 3 and a green. We can put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a land we control, and it turns into a creature as well. So we can use that as a mana sink, can activate the ability on the same land multiple times to keep making it bigger and bigger, and kill the opponent that way as well. So that's our goal, get Titania and Argoth in play at the same time, while also having enough lands in Graveyard to transform. So our deck is kind of a self-mill graveyard deck that will have plenty of ways to get back creatures as well as lands from the graveyard. So even if we happen to mill our goth or titania, we'll still be able to get them back. So let's take a look at our two drops first, where we have Undead Butler, a 2-mana 1-2 that mills 3 cards when it enters the battlefield, and when it dies we may exile it, and if we do we get to return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand, so that can maybe get back Titania. Then we have 4 copies of the Reclusive Taxidermist, a 1-2 that can tap to add 1 mana of any color, and also gets plus 3 plus 2, so turns into a 4-4 as long as there are 4 or more creature cards in our graveyard, which we can achieve pretty easily in this deck. And the extra mana fixing from Taxidermist is quite helpful, since we are a 4 color deck at the end of the day, mainly black-green, with a little bit of white for Sarah Paragon and some of our spells here, and then blue for the kicker on Urborg, a Lurgoif, which which is a 2-drop, can also kick it for either blue and or black, so could cast it for 4 mana total if we want to, in which case when it enters, mill 3 cards for each time it was kicked, so could mill 3 for 3 mana, could mill 6 for 4 mana, which is a pretty good deal. And then the Lurgoif's power is equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard, and toughness equal to that number plus 1, so it can also scale very nicely into the late game, can pretty easily get up to 10 plus power in the late game. And then at 3 mana, besides Titania, a very important card is the Eccentric Farmer. A 2-3, when it enters the battlefield, mill 3 cards, and then we may return a land card from our graveyard to our hand. So that's one of the main ways to get back Argoth from our graveyard, so we can assemble it alongside Titania. And then 4 copies of Cemetery Tampering. I've finally found a home for this card and I've been trying for quite a while. A 3 mana enchantment with Hideaway 5, so when it enters, look at the top 5 cards of our library, can exile one of them face down, and then when we meet this card's condition, we get to cast that card for free. And in this case, at the beginning of our upkeep, we get to mill 3 cards, so a great way to enable our various graveyard synergies. And if there are 20 or more cards in our graveyard, we can enable Hideaway and cast that card for free. So that can maybe hide Titania and then we can cast it for free but we can also maybe get some of our more expensive cards like Vivian on the Hunt, a nice 6 mana Planeswalker, starts on 4 loyalty, can plus 2, make us sacrifice a creature if we do search our library for a creature with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrifice creature's mana value to put it onto the battlefield, so we can maybe sacrifice one of our 2 mana creatures and search up Titania, which is another way to kind of get it in play. We can also plus 1, mill 5 cards, it's another great mill engine, 
to then put any number of creature cards milled this way into our hand if we want to. Sometimes it can benefit us to let a few go to the graveyard to grow cards like Urborg Alorgoif. And then a minus one just makes a 4-4 a Rhino Warrior Creature token. So this deck can make very good use of the first plus abilities. And then the Rhino is still a nice ability to add more creatures to the board. And then we also have two copies of Sarah Paragon, and that's the main reason to play white, is a creature that lets us replay permanents with mana value 3 or less from the graveyard once each turn, including our lands, like maybe Argoth, and including, of course, Titania. So the Paragon ties everything together nicely. Double white can be a bit tricky to cast, but that's also where the extra fixing from the Taxidermist comes in handy. And we're also playing more lands than your average deck to make sure we have enough white sources for Paragon, and the Paragon can also potentially gain some more life, which is helpful against aggressive decks, especially nice with the fetch land if we don't mind it getting exiled, as it will gain 3 life total. And then we also have some more white cards here that are non-creature spells, can't stay away, 2 mana sorcery returning a creature card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and then if it would die it gets exiled instead, so that can be another way to get back Titania if we happened to mill it, and we can even flash it back for 5 mana, so if can't stay away itself also gets milled, then we can still get value from it. And same with Rite of Oblivion, which is 2 mana as an additional cost, sacrifice a non-land permanent to exile target non-land permanent, so it gives us a tiny bit of interaction, and we can also flash it back for 4 mana. Sometimes we have a card like Cemetery Tampering, which has already done its job and cast a hideaway card for free. Now we don't really mind sacrificing it to a Rite of Oblivion, for instance, especially once we no longer want to mill extra cards if we're starting to run low in our library. And then uh, going over the mana base, of course, four copies of Argoth, which can also make some bear tokens and help us mill more cards into our graveyard. And then a ton of mana fixing with our tri lands, with the headquarters and Rafine's Tower. The fetch lands have a ton of synergy in our deck, as we can bring them back when we melt into Titania and gain a bit of life back. If we run out of basics, it's no big deal, since we'll have a ton of lands in play anyways. And then we can also replay them with a Paragon. We can get them back with Eccentric Farmer to be guaranteed a land in the graveyard if we happen to mill three non-land cards. And uh, I can keep going on about how good these are in the deck. And then we've got a couple basics, of course, to fetch with our various fetch lands. And then a Boseju and a Bandit Mire can also be channeled and gain life with Titania. And then every time we mill additional cards, of course, through our various creatures, we can gain more life with Titania. So that's also helpful against aggressive decks. And then some more dual lands with the Death Camp Glade. We've got Lanor Waste, another new addition from Brothers War and two copies of Overgrown Farmland. I'm sure you can fine-tune the mana base some more, but I've been pretty happy with it so far. So yeah, that's our pretty wacky four-color Titania Melt deck. Let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and hand seems acceptable. Maybe a little bit vulnerable to just removal on Titania, and also not the best against a very aggressive start from our opponent but Tampering will do a good job in helping us find Argoth through our various self-mill synergies. So we'll see what we're up against here. Turn 1 Mountain and Epicure. Taxidermist was a great draw. And I should probably just play Abandoned Mire here. Opponent Red Black with turn 2 Anvil. That's a scary card. Right is a way to answer it. For now, I think still play Titania. And then next turn we can get Tampering online. And then Taxidermist could attack, although on the off chance they kill Titania. I would rather have a blocker back to prevent the damage. So our opponent didn't use Anvil on the Blood Token last turn. They've got a Dragon Engine, in case their opponent's melding Mishra, in which case we'll need to save our right. Exiling Dragon Engine, also good value, as that means they wouldn't be unearthing it. Farmer's not a bad draw, so I can maybe start there. If I mill Argoth, I could play it, but then I wouldn't be able to write. So I think we play Island first, as we wouldn't be able to transform Titania anyways, with not enough lands in Graveyard. Okay, found a planes at least. And then do I want to exile the dragon engine is the question. 
I guess your opponent could sacrifice it to the uh, anvil in response, so it's not actually exiled. So I'll hang on to my right. And then next turn I could play double tampering. Okay, there's Mishra, so change of plan. We'll have to write Mishra. And then I could play a fully kicked Lurgoy, or I could play Tampering. I guess we'll uh, get the Tampering going here. And Hideaway finds another Titania, perhaps, in case they kill the first one. Sure. And pass it back. Okay. Opponents reluctant to activate their anvil. They've got a second one now. At least no backup Mishra. It's gonna be a second engine instead. So they could start swinging with the first one to trade for Titania. Anvil makes two one ones. But we're happy to settle into a grindy long game where we can eventually melt Titania. Now, kind of interested in playing another tampering as soon as possible. And could add a butler to the board or play a Lurgoyf and kick it once. And the tampering now. I guess could still go for Titania, since I'm probably not interested in a Taxidermist at that point in the game. Nah, I think uh, I might actually want the extra threat. And then, uh, sure, we'll just play a Butler, so next turn I can play a fully kicked Lurgoyf to help with uh, two Tamperings as well. We've got to right to answer Mishra if that shows up. And can't stay away. Could eventually get back a farmer if we mill the uh, land to melt with Titania. Smelter can also sacrifice tokens to enable Anvil and even have a third one. So this is gonna hurt. At least Titania blocks the three ones nicely. And we're not too sad to chump with a butler. So yeah, opponent's making three one ones per turn. Can drain us with triple Anvil but decides not to attack. In the meantime, our graveyard is also growing, so next turn we could cast a free card of Tampering. And do we have any sightings of Argoth? Not yet. So in that case, do I just kind of try my luck, bring back a eccentric farmer and hope to mill one in the top three? I think I'm better off just playing a kicked Lurgoyf. And then I can still play Butler as well. Gain life with Titania. Now the Lurgoyf by itself, not really good enough to get past all the 1-1 tokens from the opponent. But a trampling Titania sure is. Okay, do we now have Argoth? We do. So I can not stay away on the Eccentric Farmer, play Argoth next turn, and we should be in the clear. Smelter can make another 3-1. They could also sack Engine to unearth it just to draw 3. Although they can always sacrifice it to the Anvil as well. And given that we have a backup Titania, I don't mind trading for a Dragon Engine here. Since next turn we get to cast a free Titania. Maybe miss out on a bit of life gain. Although we can try and stack the Tampering trigger so we cast a Titania first before milling three more. Is our opponent unearthing the dragon engine? 
to discard their hands and draw three. They had another engine in hand. Okay. So they're maybe digging for Mishra here. Although we still have the right to answer it. Times two even. Surprise I didn't uh, sack the unearthed engine to the anvil. Alright, so tampering. We want to switch around so we resolve the Titania tampering first. Cast Titania for free and then mill three more. Fifteen cards remaining, so we might have to slow down on the self-mill effects now. Paragon's going to be great too. So, I think the plan is still can't stay away since I don't have the mana for Paragon plus Farmer. And Farmer gets back Argoth. Okay. Well, let's hope the opponent doesn't have removal here for Titania. But even if they do, I can still Paragon to replay, and then we should be fine. Don't think there's a point in attacking, since they can just chum block and sacrifice to Anvil. So our opponent's got four cards in hand. Another Anvil, so they've got all four. So probably no Mishra this turn. Another Smelter instead. Okay, we'll see if the 1-1 one -one tokens can keep up with our giant Trampler. They might be able to trade for the first melded Titania. But it's not going to take too long to assemble a second one. I'm going to stop the self-mill with tampering since we're down to 11 cards. So... Yeah, let's uh, just transform here. I guess we could maybe mill three more, have eight cards remaining. And grow Titania a little bit more on the way out. And with all this mana, we could also wait to maybe activate Titania on our lands to start making more creatures. Although it's pretty tempting to just smash here. How much power does our opponent have? 6, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I don't think they have enough to actually trade for Titania. So that's good news. So Titania gets to attack. And, uh, sure, I could also send in some other stuff here if we'd like. Although our opponent can always jump and sacrifice with Anvil. So, the trample is the important part here. Opponent's gonna trade for Taxidermists. Now we don't really need the mana anymore. Okay. Damage happens. So our opponent survives. But falls pretty low. And I could still play Paragon. Or I can just activate Titania here. Don't think there's anything we need to write. I'll just pass. Play Paragon next turn once we have the mana to actually replay something from the graveyard right away. I guess we still could have here since some of my lands were hiding. Could have maybe played another Lurgoif. Although I'm more interested in making sure I can replay Titania. Should they find an answer. Opponent cycles through the deck, makes more 1-1s. One but they need some removal for Titania. One card left. Alright, GG's. Looks like Melda Titania got it done against Quadruple Unicult Anvil. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand... 
yeah, it's probably keepable. Can play a taxidermist. Storefront can grab a planes to help with Paragon. And then we already have Titania, so we're just missing Argoth. Opponent also on a self mill deck. So next turn, could play Titania first to maybe gain some life if we play Farmer. Although if I'm about to miss my land drop, I'm probably better off playing Farmer, which at the very least gets back Storefront. So we'll try that. And uh, Headquarters also an option. Might be better in terms of mana fixing, where a Storefront puts an extra land in Graveyard. Which is maybe still better if we want to transform Titania sooner. And then... What land to get? Probably a Swamp here. And then we could still play a fully kicked Lurgoyf next turn if we want. Opponents got their own Titania. Alright, it's the mirror match. We'll see which deck is better at self-milling. For now, I could play my own Titania, although we're not close to transforming it. So maybe develop my mana with Taxidermist and play a Butler to mill. Probably could have saved myself one point of damage there. So five lands in graveyards, no Argoth in sight. So hoping that uh, Lurgoyf can find it. And then if the farmer dies, we can uh, potentially bring it back. Opponent with a kicked Terra Sunder to exile, and there's Argoth. Okay, so I guess we'll play Titania, play Argoth. Could still play two mana Lurgoyf. I think I keep it as kind of a kicked option. In case we need to mill more. Even though, yeah, it would be mana efficient to play it right now. Another Terra Sunder hits the graveyard. And sadly they had one still in hand, so yeah, no bringing it back with Can't Stay Away or Paragon. So we need to find a backup, which is why hanging on to Lurgoyf was maybe not a bad idea. So we'll play it fully kicked now. Alright, still no Titania in sight. Stomper can help the opponent ramp. But they're pretty far from enabling Titania, and there's a backup. Perfect. So play that plus Butler. Can gain some life of the self mill. And then Urborg Lurgoyf gets to smash since Stomper isn't active yet. Opponent takes it. Once the Sprout transforms into the Death Bonnet Hulk, it can also become a problem exiling cards from our graveyard. So. Hopefully we can get this game over with quickly. Misery's Shadow, another powerful addition from the Brothers War. Not the most synergistic with the Melt plan, but uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if you can just keep exiling Titania thanks to the Shadow now, after Bushwhack fights. So opponents maybe less all-in on the Titania plan, but uh, they've got some nice interaction. Okay, so we have two copies of Titania left in our deck, halfway through, so what's the best way to find it? We could try to just activate Argoth to mill, we could bring back one of our self-mill creatures like Farmer. Uh, let's see, I don't quite have the mana to play Paragon and play Farmer, but I could play uh, Lurgoyf after playing Paragon, so that's pretty good. So first, probably one attack, so the Lurgoyf is still a bit larger. And then 
Paragon into a Lurgoyf. It's not going to be kicked, which, you know, would have been an option if we waited. But we still have double farmer to bring back, so I'm not too concerned. Titania up 2-3, although still missing Argoth. The Misery Shadow does nerf a lot of our cards, like Undead Butler as well. And now a Ritualist to make more mana. Alright, so pretty full graveyard. And we could even replay Cemetery Tampering, which is not a bad way to find more action. And uh, Lurgo if we can now play Kicked. So yeah, our opponent sees a riding on the wall and packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's missing some creatures. Double tampering could still be pretty sweet if we're not up against a very aggressive deck, that is. And then we already have Argoth, so just need to find Titania. Turn one, Reckonerate does point towards an aggro deck. At least Farmer gives us a blocker, although it's not going to help against a 2-2 with Menace. Alright, no 2-drop is good news. So I'll play a tapped Argoth. And then next turn, maybe play one of our three Tamperings. Field of Ruin could potentially mess up Argoth, but uh, for now, play Tampering. And Farmer can get back an Argoth that they destroy as well. And a Vivian seems like a nice free spell to play if we get to 20 cards in Graveyard eventually. Blood Pact to draw. Hope to dodge a Shieldred. It's just going to be another Reckoner Raid. And a Splatter Goblin, of all things. So we're under quite a bit of pressure here. We'll need to add some creatures to the board to try and stem the bleeding. Although, right now, Farmer still trades for Goblin. Doesn't block the Captain, necessarily. So I could still be better off playing another Tampering, and then next turn I can double spell Taxidermist plus Farmer. And not play into the opponent's removal just yet. And uh, probably want a Titania here. So if we get to 20 cards in Graveyard, we get a Titania. And we'll have enough lands to enable it, undoubtedly. Court official to make me discard is not too bad. Probably hang on to the islands. I guess we could have used Boseju as well to deal with uh, enchantments. So I wonder if that's maybe worth it. Nah, it's probably not going to be good enough. So we're down to 10. Six more cards hit the graveyard. So we're up to 10 cards. So if I play another Tampering, we're probably close to it next turn. Since we get to mill nine more cards, so I could go Tampering plus Taxidermist. Sadly, cannot go Tampering plus Butler. Although I could also go Farmer plus Butler, and then we're milling a total of six cards. So six plus six, we'll get there. Yeah, I guess that's fine. And that also gives us some more blockers. Opponents get to cut down at the ready. They couldn't wait to fire that one off. So if I get a land back, I mill three more. Yeah, I'll only be able to enable one of the two tamperings and not both. So getting back a land is still fine. And I'll go for a plains here or a swamp. Play Butler. So that's 16 cards in Graveyard. And then there's going to be 6 more coming up. If they kill the Butler, then it could benefit me not to get a card back out of my Graveyard. So I enable both Tamperings and I get a free Titania and a free Vivian. Yeah. I think I'll decline. So we're taking 5 down to 5, but now's our big turn. 
cast Titania for free and then mill three more. Free Titania, ten lands in Graveyard. And if her opponent kills it here, I guess Vivian could still search up another by sacking Taxidermist. Or we could can't stay away. Free Vivian. And now we get to gain some life off Titania as well, so that's nice. And find a backup Titania anyways for our draw step. So Vivian likely just making a Rhino here. Could also mill the top 5 to try and find more creatures. Which could help stabilize me more than otherwise just playing a Taxidermist. Although we're also adding a Rhino to the board. So I, I guess Rhino is still probably safer than uh, trying to mill if we miss it would be a bit of a disaster. Let's play Taxidermists and play another Tampering. Upside of finding more creatures is that they could also mill more cards and maybe grow Titania. Tampering this time going for right, I think, since we have another Titania in hand. And then right could also sacrifice one of the Tamperings since we have enough cards in Graveyard already now. Midnight Sky, 5-5 five, five, Flying Menace, can make us discard and drain for two if it dies. So don't think we can quite one-hit KO the opponent here with Titania, but we're gonna get pretty close. And our opponent goes for an all-out attack. So let's see here, can double block a Captain and uh, a Splatter Goblin and our creatures should be safe. Okay, so let's put Titania's trigger last, mill for 9 first, to grow the melded Titania even more. Also gain more life in the process. It's important to disable automatically stacking the triggers. And then we'll cast our free rights, exile the Midnight Sky, get rid of tampering, melt Titania, And that should be a one-hit KO. 2020. Might be a 1919 if we're out of basics. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Could use an untapped land here to curve out, but I'm gonna keep this. Taxidermist to make more mana, we've got our Titania and then a bunch of self-mill effects to try and find Argoth eventually. And then a farmer to maybe get Argoth back from the graveyard. And there's the untapped land, so now we get to play turn 2 Taxidermist into maybe a turn 3 kicked Lurgoif. Requisitioner will make a treasure when it dies. And then turn 4 we can maybe go Titania into Butler and gain some life. Okay, the Face Breaker does incentivize us to trade here and not give the opponent any unnecessary treasures. Although if we trade it does kind of mess with our curve, I could still play Titania. But then I guess Face Breaker gets to hit us regardless next turn. I think I just uh, take the hit. And play Kicked Lurgoif. Hope to mill some creatures to make it bigger. So 2 3 at the moment. Can do it again next turn if we want. Or as we said, we can go for Titania plus Butler. Another Face Breaker, so opponent's about to make a ton of treasure. And the Sticky Fingers as well to give menace. Three treasure tokens and now a phoenix chick. And then they can turn those treasure tokens into extra card advantage basically. 
A right could get rid of one, but I don't think I'm interested in playing that right now. Instead, kind of liking Titania plus Butler. Gain some life back, and then next turn go for another kicked Lurgoyf. And now we should be able to at least double block one face breaker. And now got a 4-5 Lurgoyf, 4-4 Taxidermist. And we're just missing Argoth to transform Titania. So our opponent's gonna go digging, finds a Gold Hound, also good synergy with a face breaker. As a first strike menace creature that can potentially help give two treasures with a face breaker. One from first strike and then maybe regular damage as well. Another Phoenix chick, at least Titania has reach. So block a chick and then double block Requisitioner. And Butler can get back maybe a Sarah Paragon if they decide to kill it. That seems fine. Paragon can get back fetch lanes, which will gain life of Titania, of Paragon itself. So that should keep us afloat. Opponent goes digging, finding a land. So they don't seem too happy about that. And then we should have a fetch land here, or even an Argoth, so I guess that also works. Just replay Argoth for now. Even though we're not in a hurry to melt Titania, if I play the fetch land I would gain a ton of life here. Nah, I guess we'll still go for Argoth at 13, we should be safe enough. And I can add another Lurgoyf to the board if I'd like. If they somehow kill both Titania and Paragon. We have another Paragon to bring back Titania. Although I guess now we're down to three lands in Graveyard, so we cannot actually melt Titania yet. Did not consider that. Either way, let's uh, try and take out Facebreaker as much as possible. And then take a bunch of damage. They will be able to make two treasures of Gold Hounds, but yeah, once the face breakers are gone, they won't be able to leverage them for card advantage. Unless they have another one in hand. So they're gonna exile right now, finding Anvil makes sense. Two more treasures. Which the opponent's gonna keep. And that can start draining us, but the uh, life gain from Paragon and Titania should be able to keep up. Okay, so a ton of options now. I can just play a fetch land from hand as well if I'd like. And then play a tampering from the graveyard. And our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is probably fine to keep. If we mill Titania we can get her back and uh, in the meantime double farmer to fill the graveyard as well. Start with a fetch land, maybe getting up planes. Turn two Argoth tapped, turn three either farmer or tampering depending on if we need to add some creatures to the board. Opponents got a four-color deck themselves. And a Restoration of Iganjo to get an extra planes. Paragon's not bad. Yeah, I could get going on the tampering. The sooner the better. Upside of playing farmers is that it can maybe apply a bit of pressure to uh, the opponent's life total. Maybe a planeswalker if that shows up. And then we'll have a free Titania waiting for us if we get 20 cards in Graveyard. Hallowed Respite could point towards maybe a prototype deck where they can flicker the prototype creatures 
to get a bigger version of them in play. And yeah, there we see Comma Thresher. So that's going to be pretty scary. We'll just keep milling. Boseju could also be effective in this matchup, and I can bring it back with Farmer. Wait on playing Paragon until we can get immediate value. Although I'll also need double white to play a Paragon in the first place. So maybe it could be convinced to grab a farmland. Although there's also Titania in the graveyard. So next turn we can already can stay away, bring it back. Uh, in which case I might just want to go for the fetch land. To keep as many lands in graveyard as possible. And uh, sure we'll get another planes. So that also casts Paragon. Okay, so in two turns we could be melding Titania. The Golem will gain life, also a good target for Respite. They could also have access to the uh, enchantments, which can channel at instant speed to flicker a creature. For now, I think the plan is can't stay away Titania, and then I can play a farmer as well if I'd like. And do I want to get a land back? Not really, since more lands means bigger Titania next turn. Although getting a Boseju, I guess, would have been reasonable. Just to be able to destroy opposing artifacts or enchantments. If our opponent exiles Titania, we can still get one back with Paragon, and eventually one with a Cemetery Tampering as well. Opponent's got their own Paragon to replay fetch land. So we have yet to see the opponent flicker one of their prototype creatures. Maybe they're going to try and exile or meld the Titania to kind of break up that synergy at instant speed. But we'll still get a bunch of lands back at least. Alright, they're going to touch the Spirit Realm right now. So Titania is going to be gone for a whole turn cycle here. Right can answer the opponent's Paragon before they can replay Touch the Spirit Realm. So that seems good. And then that's probably my entire turn gone. 16 cards in Graveyard, so close to just casting a free Titania off Tampering as well. And oh no, we're out of... Uh, Basics, I guess, island in hand. Maybe should have played the uh, Broker's Hideout to get a forest, since we should still have a couple forests remaining. Alright, lay down arms to exile Titania. So yeah, we'll need another one coming up next turn. Although it won't transform right away. And our opponent's gonna flicker the golem to make it bigger. Yeah, missing that land drop could actually cost us a little bit since now I cannot play Paragon and cast something like a 3 drop out of the graveyard. So we've got our free Titania. I can, I guess, play Paragon and play a Lurgoyf still. That's pretty good. Although it's going to be without Kicker. Okay. So if our opponent answers Titania once again, 
We still have one remaining. And a soul partition. Alright, at least we can still cast it for five mana. So they really don't want us to melt Titania. But in the meantime, we still have a 7-8 Lorgoif to hopefully prevent any attacks. Bone goes all in. Alright, I guess uh, we're blocking here. Could be a sweeper in our future. In which case, this seems fine. Don't really expect any pump spells. Alright, we get to mill with tampering. And a lot of cards to replay with Paragon, including a 3-mana Titania. And I should probably go for it while we can. And then can attack with Lorgoif and Paragon and see what's up. Opponent could be holding a Wandering Emperor, which is a reason not to attack. Titania itself will have Vigilance, so that one doesn't run into a Wandering Emperor. So maybe just attack with a Lorgoif. Opponent chumps. They could also be sitting on a Sweeper that they're just waiting to fire off next turn. In which case I still have my Titania waiting in exile and get our last forest. And then I'll hang on to Taxidermist as well. Do we finally get to melt Titania? Or is there more interaction? Three cards in hand. Alright, touch the Spirit Realm Architect instead of Titania, so they must have other answers. Depopulate makes sense. So everything dies. Don't think I need to use Abandoned Mire here. Alright, opponent's down to one card in hand, and I can play one final Titania. Keep milling. And the Lorgoif's pretty good too. I wonder if I should even play a Lurgoif here, if her opponent does have another board wipe. Might be better off just playing a Taxidermist, which still applies a good bit of pressure. But that will leave us with a bigger threat afterwards. And then we still have two copies of Can't Stay Away to bring back Titania from the graveyard. Rafine's Tower cycled. And another restoration. Okay. I guess we'll mill first. 16 cards remaining, so I'm still fine to mill three. Grow Titania some more. And that's a 2020. Probably gonna shrink down a bit since we are out of basics to fetch. Okay, and uh, yeah, let's attack. That worked. Opponent falls to 15. And uh, I don't think I'm adding a Lurgoif to the board. Let's just pass, and then I can activate Titania if I want to. Restoration gets back hideouts. That's not gonna keep them alive by itself. And a touch the spirit realm will exile Titania. Okay, let's activate it on the way out here. And uh, I could use Abandoned Mire to get back Titania. Or we can can't stay away to get it back. That seems fine. Problem now is re-enabling Titania. Could also get Vivian. It's probably a better threat here. 
since we're down to nine cards in library and uh, don't have a ton of lands left. So I don't think I'm milling anymore. So I don't have any copies of Titania in the library, so I can't sacrifice Taxidermist to get one, but we can always can't stay away to get Titania back and then still play Vivian and double Lorgoyf if we want. So we still have a ton of uh, recursion here. And we do still have enough lands in Graveyard, luckily. Play Vivian, just make a Rhino, I think. And I'll play one Lurgoyf on the off chance they top deck another Depopulate. No need to mill. And I'll pass it back. And then next turn I could also Rite of Oblivion, a final blocker. Could have also exiled Touch the Spirit Realm to get Titania back. So we still have one last way to uh, melt Titania, potentially. Alright, just a land from the opponents, so that should do it. There she is once again. Gain some more life off our fetch lands. And I guess having a bunch of fetch lands also makes it easier for a second melded Titania to happen since you'll still end up with a few extra lands in the graveyard. Probably should have just played Storefront last turn to gain a bit more life here. But uh, yeah, let's move to combats. Can maybe animate another land to diversify a bit. And then we can spend even more mana pumping the lands. All right, sweet. So it took a while, but uh, yeah, our deck is very persistent at melding Titania. So maybe not the most competitive deck in standard, but if your only goal is to melt Titania, this is potentially one of the better ways to do it. And I've been pretty happy with this deck so far. Almost every game I've been successful in melding Titania, which uh, more often than not will also win you the game. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.